Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the 6 p.m. session of the October 2nd, 2018 meeting of the Santa Cruz City Council. I'd now like to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Crone. Here. Matthews. Here. Member Chase will be absent. Brown. Here. Orion. Here. Vice Mayor Watkins. Here. And Mayor Terraza. Here. So there are two items on tonight's agenda. We're gonna start with the green business and green building builders recognition, and then we'll have after that advisory body interviews for the charter amendment committee. So I'd like to now turn it over to the green business and program for presentation. Good afternoon, Mayor Terrazas and council members. I appreciate the time to make this presentation to council on behalf of the green building program. The City of Santa Cruz has demonstrated continued dedication to responsible and sustainable building practices by providing green building review for over a decade with over 600 reviews this calendar year to date. Our green building program identifies projects developed and completed by forward thinking members of the community. The award process recognizes projects utilizing the highest standards for techniques in construction and design. Today I'm pleased to present three new awards for achievement in exceptional design. Since the start of the program, the city has recognized 83 projects with Green Building Awards. Next slide, please. Please join me in recognizing award number 84 for 512 Second Street, owner Adriana Gupta, architect Tim Lorenz, and builder Max Schultz. At this time, I would like to share a short description of the first project receiving an award today. This project went far beyond the requirements for an addition remodel. Note the owner specified pervious pavers at the lot entrance, increasing on-site water retention. Slide, please. The EV charging station will reduce vehicle-related greenhouse gas emissions, and a solar-lit path improves <coughs> site access and night safety. Extensive materials reclamation and domestic made products reduced building supply chain impacts. Mayor Terrazas, it would be an honor if you would present the awards. Accepting the plaque this evening, Adriana Gupta, owner, and Max Schultz, builder, will you both please come forward? The architect, Tim Lorenz, had personal business this evening and could not attend. So this is for Adriana. Oh, okay. <laughs> Max. Oh, nice, Gus. <laughs> Next slide, please. Please join me in also recognizing award number 85 for 252 Third Avenue. Owner and architect, Sarah Kane, and builder, Scott Milrod. At this time, I would like to share a short description of the second project receiving an award. This project went far beyond the requirements for a new home. In her design, owner and architect, Sarah Kane, used existing shading and planted new west-facing deciduous trees to provide natural protection against overheating. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. <laughs> oh, yes, sorry, uh, go back one. Uh, yeah, this, uh, the engineered stone countertops and, and engineered timber eye joists are examples of project materials repurposed from recycled building materials. Next slide, please. The photovoltaic panels installed help offset daytime electric loads, and the rainwater catchment and storage system ease the water use intensity of the home. Mayor Terrazas, it would be an honor if you would present the awards. Accepting the plaque this evening, owner and architect Sarah Kane, will you please come forward? Uh, and also builder Scott Milrod. So this is for Scott. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Slide, please. Please join me in also recognizing award number 86 for 555 Pacific Avenue. Ownership, Green Valley Corporation, architect, Swenson Architecture, and builder, Swenson Builders. At this time, I would like to share a short description of the third project receiving an award. This 94 unit development went far beyond the requirements for a residential mixed use project. The Swenson architectural team specified tune shading overhangs to help passively retain interior comfort. Next slide, please. Reclaimed wood finishes complement the modern building facade while efficient radiant floor heating uses energy resources wisely. Next slide, please. Efficient Energy Star appliances reduce reliance on our district water and further reduce energy use, while electric vehicle charging provides occupants options for lower impact personal transportation. Mayor Tarazis, it would be an honor if you would present the awards for this project. All right, so accepting the plaque this evening, Jesse Swenson for Green Valley Corporation. Jesse <laughs> Swenson. Jesse. Jesse Nichols. Jesse Nichols, excuse me. Jesse Nichols. <laughs> Got to get a photo, Tim's going to take a picture. And uh, Jeff Huff. You got to hold that thing up front. In closing, I want to remind mm -hmm. our community that the city of Santa Cruz is still a leader in the push towards a new era of sustainable communities which are also affordable. We have chosen to recognize the importance of quality in our built environments. This is especially important as we enter the era of neutral energy and positive energy buildings. The Green Building Program is motivated by our leadership role and will continue to inspire innovation through engagement with the creative minds within our own community as we work together for a secure future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all being here and, and it's exciting that we began the meeting recognizing community members and businesses that go well beyond um, and above, beyond and above the uh, help our community achieve to live up to its uh, values. And I wanna thank you, Kurt, and everyone in the planning department for all the work you do. Do you wanna make a, you know? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So thanks again, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, we're going to move on to our one general business item this evening. There'll be no oral communications or other items that will be heard, heard at this meeting. Um, and just as background, on August 14th, the City Council directed uh, the establishment of the Charter Amendment Committee, which will be comprised of seven direct appointees by the City Council and six at-large members selected by the City Council. In addition to the seven appointees which the, the City Council has already made, we received 13 applications for the six at-large spots. Tonight we'll be hearing from <laughs> candidates for these six spots and we'll make final appointments to the committee at our next council meeting on October 9th. I'd like to first uh, give some background. We'll call up applicants to the lectern in alphabetical order. Um, each uh, applicant will be given three minutes to address the council. Once you speak, you may leave or stay to listen to the other applicants um, at the conclusion. 
And um, once council members have received and reviewed the applications, um, and we've had an opportunity to read them over the last week, so really this meeting is a uh, time for you to introduce yourself personally to amplify the, the, um, the uh, descriptions you provided in the applications, your qualifications, relevant backgrounds and motivations, and additionally, um, the meeting is mostly informal to allow the council to get to know you. So we'll begin, um, first of all, if there's any council questions before we start. No, no? So we'll start by um, inviting up Steve Bosworth. You just leave it to him, you can hand. You can use the mic, this mic on the, t on the no, the one on the lectern. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can Thank start you. the time. Thank you. Uh, my name is Stephen Bosworth. Uh, I'm uh, looking forward to the possibility of perhaps being appointed a member of this committee. Um, I'm, I was born and raised in Michigan, but uh, I have, as a result of going into the Peace Corps, spent uh, two years in West Africa, in Ghana, and as a result of that, I ended up doing my postgraduate study in Britain. As a result of that, I met my English wife, and I got my PhD at the, from the University of London and taught at the university level for over 20 years there. During the time I was there, we had a job exchange with a, a member of staff at Cabrillo, so I had the pleasure of it being introduced to Santa Cruz, and, uh, and my children and wife loved it as well. She took painting uh, there and is still an enthusiastic oil uh, watercolor painter. Um, uh, at, most recently, I've been, had been, before I just retired, uh, I've uh, taught in the Eastern Mediterranean in Cyprus at the universities there. I've, my discipline has been political philosophy and political science. And as a result of living all these different places and studying comparative politics, of course, I have a lot of ideas about what might help make uh, the institutions of a city council uh, uh, more efficiently democratic and more likely to produce uh, people who will make wise decisions. Uh, and so uh, I would relish the possibility of participating in the dialogue that will occur on this committee, looking at various ideas, including the ideas that have uh, brought the, it forward in the first place, the election of the mayor, uh, the in reintroduction of electoral districts or wards. Uh, uh, the particular item that I would like to be discussion, discussed at some stage is the consideration of a, uh, an electoral system that would not waste the between 38 and 50 percent of the votes that are wasted uh, by the existing system. Uh, but th those kind of details are in that little piece of paper, leaves an outline of that. Uh, all that will take. Uh, thought and careful discussion. Uh, and so I uh, look forward to the possibility of answering any questions if you would like to ask any questions of me now. Thank you. Generally, this is your opportunity to speak, but um, the time's done. Are there any questions? Yes. Councilmember Crone. Would you consider the ranked choice voting system um, one of those mechanisms where it wouldn't waste 30 to 80 percent uh, of the votes? Uh, it, would, it would waste fewer votes, but it would still waste some. It, the other flaw in it is it has the possibility of eliminating the most preferred candidate instead of a candidate that is elected. So there's, there's some flaws there. It's a bit more complicated and also a little bit less uh, informative and discerning than the uh, evaluative proportional representation uh, system that I would like to propose. Thank you. Councilmember Brown. Um, so uh, I'm, this is a question that I uh, might ask of, of all candidates. Uh, just uh, so this is, a, this is a charter review committee and, and the, there's a particular set of uh, issues that we put forward to uh, potentially be discussed among others. Um, 
in so in terms of I mean this is a, I consider it a serious matter to change our city's charter and so I just I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about that, if you've read the charter. And yes, yes, I have read it. Um, uh, and uh, yes, I think uh, as, as, they, as they go, I mean, it's one of the normal organizations, suburban city in the United States. There's various varieties and the uh, manager council one is one of them. Uh, I myself don't see any particular flaw in that general outline. I only would want the council to really be more exactly representative of the citizens of Santa Cruz, which is possible by this method. Uh, and that's with or without the reintroduction of uh, districts. Thank you. I'd like to now invite up Patrice Boyle. Good evening. Good evening. Um, since fortunately this is not a commission for public speaking, I'm just going to read this because I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I have lived here in Santa Cruz for 31 years. I have, uh, my name is Patrice Boyle. I've lived here in Santa Cruz for 31 years. I have founded and run as a sole proprietor two small businesses for the past 16 years. I am a thoughtful and compassionate employer and business person. Currently, I employ about 50 people here in Santa Cruz, in the city of Santa Cruz. During my time, I, I moved here to work at Bonnie Doon Vineyard as the general manager in 1987. During that time, we grew the company at a rate of 25% year over year for 13 years. As you might imagine, in order to sustain that sort of growth, that rate of growth, I learned the benefits of and the requirements of embracing change and changing systems, and to be ready to accurately anticipate which systems need to change and which systems can remain in place. Because we here, Santa Cruz, we are no longer the Santa Cruz of 1952 or 1987. The needs of the city are expanding. Some of the systems that sustain it, that make it work, I think need evaluation and renewal. Santa Cruz is a world-class place with an embarrassment of riches and we need to take care of it. We want, I know everyone here wants to take care of it. I am a creative and hardworking person and as uh, someone who works in a continually social environment, I work well in a team. I'm a board member of the DTA, a co-founder of the Alliance for Women Entrepreneurs in downtown and co-chair of the Homeless Garden Project's capital campaign to move to Pogonip. The Homeless Garden Project uh, move to Pogonip is a, a project I've been working on for 17 years. I welcome the opportunity um, to be on this commission. I think it would be fascinating and um, I think it's a really wonderful thing to be doing, just to be reviewing things and to look, be looking at them and it, I mean, from a selfish point of view, I relish the idea of learning about it. We all know that change is inevitable, but when we can adeptly manage that change, it can be welcome and beneficial as well. Thank you. Thank you, Patrice. And any questions? Okay, Council Member Crum. Yeah, uh, thank you. And um, I like the collaboration part and the um, conflict management skills training that is in your resume. Um, just wondering, you said I am a creative advocate for the betterment of the city, and not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot, what, what could you give an example of, a, of being a creative ad advocate for the betterment of the city? Well, I just most recently, the Alliance for Women Entrep of Women Entrepreneurs is very creative, and it is uh, gives voice to the women who work and live downtown. It is really. Um, we started out with mostly, I would say, retail entrepreneurs, but we are um, embracing and enlarging that to include people at what we call second floor, third floor. So the doctors, the lawyers, the office people who are down here as well. We want to show people that yes, Santa Cruz, downtown Santa Cruz does have challenges, but there are a lot of people here um, in downtown, women, who are embracing the challenges and working to creatively change them. So we, we're not, it's not a, 
It's very open. It's a very open um, environment. We're ba we're trying to renew the neighborhood of downtown. Have eyes on the street, so people we we're all um, we know each other and we can uh, depend on each other. But also just to create uh, to change the. Um, I think we think we can change the environment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Patrice. Thanks. Okay, um, I'd like to invite up Bill Brooks next. Hello, my name is Bill Brooks. Uh, I've lived in Santa Cruz since 1959. And I think this uh, commission, uh, I would be well suited for it for the experiences I had. I graduated from Santa Cruz High School. I worked, went out to Cabrillo for about a year and then got a good job at Sylvania Electronics when they were where Plantronics is now and actually worked in purchasing and flew all over the country talking with suppliers. And, and, and what did that teach me? Uh, good listener, compromise to achieve goals for the company and for everybody. Uh, I left Sylvania, I went to San Jose State University, I got a degree in accounting and personal management, now it's HR, <laughs> and in 1971 I went to work at UCSC as the bursar at College 8, the Environmental Studies College. Um, the bursar, bursar is the financial administrative head of the college, and I managed all non-academic personnel, which is about 50 people. I held this position for nine years, and had a wide range of course of experiences, even at Berkeley with the president's office on budgets and staffing and things like that. Uh, I worked with a wide variety and diverse group and I learned to be a good listener to folks that, uh, that had all kinds of different opinions. In 1980, I left, I, I became a real estate broker. I listed and sold houses in all the, neighbors of, the neighborhoods of Santa Cruz. And about 1990, uh, I kind of transitioned into being a full-time infill developer. I build homes, subdivision, townhomes, condominiums, and some commercials. And I might say I've won two green building awards. Uh, here again, uh, that makes you a good listener. I've worked in almost all of the neighborhoods and know the diverse neighborhoods, and I can work well and have worked well with a wide variety of people in all these neighborhoods. The committee I see uh, has, of course, to look at, do we need an elected four-year mayor? Uh, the analysis will look at the complexities of the mayor job and my depth of professional and management skills will work well to determine if a full-time mayor is a good fit for Santa Cruz. Uh, the committee is also gonna look at district elections. The analysis will look at to determine if a neighborhoods are better served with a council person from the neighborhood area. Um, and I would say that I'm sort of semi-retired now, so I've got the time to put into it, and I would like to pay back to the city that has been good to me. So, any questions? Thank you, Bill. Okay. Um, any questions? Council Member Brown. Thanks for being here and putting your name forward. Um, uh, so you mentioned the, the directly elected mayor and district elections as two of, and they, those are two of the key elements of potential charter change. Are there other elements of, at, at least in the, um, what we've laid out as a council and or other ideas that you have that you um, also are interest, excited about exploring? Well, the committee, as I understand it, is gonna look at those two items specifically for the char charter change. And I think that there's, uh, uh, you know, a lot of data that's gonna flow into there to make a decision. I mean, a mayor could be right or maybe not right. And same with the district elections. Uh, uh, I watched what happened in Watsonville when they did it, and I thought it was a pretty well thought out uh, process, and they ended up doing it. So all I'll say is that uh, I'll consider all options carefully and, and thoroughly. <laughs> okay. Council Member Crone. Good to see you, Bill. Hi. Um, just wondering, you know, we'd have to get into a long discussion, but why four-year term instead of a two-year term? Um, I think that the that the mayor is a t very much like the city manager. 
and there is continuity and in, in, um, in practice and in the people that you deal with. And uh, I have no real, I think two years might be a little soon to, to transition out of this. I listened to the mayor of, I think it was Santa Clara, give uh, that discussion and I agree with what she said that uh, you know sooner get your feet on the ground and all of a sudden you're cycled out. And uh, I think two years might be a little short. Um, I'm open to looking at what other folks think, but I think four years would be good, but no more than four years. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'd like to now invite up Sylvia Karras. Evening. You all know the written me. Writing helps me organize and clarify what I want to say and not misuse your time. So I really like using email. <laughs> Beyond what I wrote in my application, <clears throat> I moved to Santa Cruz in the early 1980s. My son had chosen UCSC, met his wife there. They now live mid-county. I'm originally from Boston. You'll hear a little of that in my speech. I like walking as transportation. I live just up the Rincon Steps, five minutes from right here. I like to read. I like to think. In the past, I've done some traveling on my own in India and Asia. My favorite country is Bhutan. And I've traveled as a presenter and an advocate to meetings on other continents and in the United States. The World Summit on the Information Society, the World Psychiatric Association, the American Public Health Association. I've served here on the Commission for the Prevention of Violence Against Women, and with Catherine Byers, helped implement the Americans with Disabilities Act in the city. I surprised myself a bit <laughs> by completing and actually sending in my application. I've heard Council's pride in being a charter city. I was curious. I have a willingness to explore, to test and challenge. I have no opinions yet about these questions. This service is a way for me to continue to be connected. If you have questions, Will you finish your presentation? Okay, thank you, Sylvia. Are, are there any questions from the council? I, I have one about um, in your application. It said we are um, make sure that local control was emphasized. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I hear council talking about um, relationship with the county and how important it is that the city values and, and when the discussions of the community support program priorities and the core priorities, those discussions, people, um, council members kept saying, but the city's emphasis needs to be, so that's that's what was in my mind when I wrote that. Hey, Councilmember Royan. Other speakers have mentioned specific things like term limits or the, um, you know, should the mayor be directly elected? Do you have any specific areas you're looking at? That you, why you want to be on this commit, committee, or are you just kind of coming with an open mind, or? Pretty open. The only piece of this at all that I know, uh, that I've looked at it, is the ranked choice voting. Um, when that was, I think, before council discussion. Um, I have questions about that. I really am, don't know, okay. like to learn. Great, thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Okay, I'd like to now invite up Gus Ceballos. Uh, once again, my name is Gus Ceballos. Um, I am born and raised here in Santa Cruz. I live about a block away, and um, I consider myself an everyman. And um, even though I am an everyman here in Santa Cruz, I love the city, and I'm still engaged in the community. Uh, number one, my wife is a small business owner. She recently started her business. Uh, number two, um, I actually am a program director for the Seniors Council of Santa Cruz County. So I am involved in a lot uh, with the senior community. Um, and number three, I am a Latino. 
Okay, and I will get to that in a little bit why it's important to me. So even though I didn't write a speech, there are a couple things that I wrote down in my, um, in my questionnaire that I'd like to point out, okay? Uh, so number one, uh, I, wanna, I wanna reflect the 21st century sensibilities and build a strong foundation for Santa Cruz's future. So what I mean by that, and I'm gonna tip my, I'm gonna tip my hat here, I would like accountability from the leaders of Santa Cruz. So accountability, um, they need support. So budgets, staff, salary, that is all things that we can work upon. Because right now, if you go and you ask an everyman, you know, who's, why is there a problem? Why are they unsatisfied with the city? They don't really know who to point fingers. They point the fingers at the mayor. And we really know that the mayor does not run the city by itself. It's a collaboration. So at least with this, we can pinpoint who's gonna be accountable for four years at least, I believe. Okay, another thing that I wrote down here, I'm ecstatic for the potential of this committee and the changes it can make. Number one, districts. 33% um, of Santa Cruz is Latino. When I saw the email and we had 13 people apply for this, I think only two were of color and only one Latino. So that's what, six, 7% representation in a city in which 33% of the people have a voice. So I feel that me being born and raised, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I got 30 seconds left. Me being born and raised here in Santa Cruz, I can actually provide a voice for the people who for very, very long have not felt engaged, and especially the youth of today. If they can see someone fighting for them, it's gonna bring them up and they're gonna become more involved. So thank you. Thank you, Gus. Are there any questions? Council, Council Member Crum. Have you seen, um, I'm just thinking of Latino representation in the mm -hmm. city of Santa Cruz. Somebody sent me a, a map recently with all the basic dots mm -hmm. of Latino voters. Do you see, um, I, I don't know if you've looked at a, a map like that, but is, would, could there be a uh, Latino majority district in Santa Cruz or is it too, are, are people too spread His, out? Historically, I'm not, I, everyone knows the Beach Flats yeah. has been uh, Hispanic since the mid 70s. I believe that over time uh, that population has grown over to uh, the Seabright area that is not up to me, that is up to this committee if it, if it decides to go to districts and hopefully I'll, it will be fair and my voice will be heard. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to invite up um, Jaime Garfield, or Jamie Garfield, excuse mm -hmm. me. Hi, Mayor Terrazas and City Council members. My name is Jamie Garfield. Um, I've lived here in Santa Cruz for almost 40 years. I retired just a few years ago along with my husband from working over 30 years at Staff of Life um, after graduating from UCSC. I have the time and intense interest I think is needed to devote to this charter review and recommendation process. I've always been interested in our election systems in fair and equal representation in voter engagement and turnout. For three years, I was a national leader in an effort to overturn Citizens United and end the corrupting influence of big money in politics. <clears throat> Here in Santa Cruz, um, we passed AJR1 and legislation in five other states. Also, I was involved in the California Clean Money Campaign for the Disclose Act, which finally passed last year and enables voters to see who the actual top three donors for a proposition are. For about a year, I was involved locally with the group Yes on Ranked Choice, an effort to, get, to gather signatures for a ballot measure to establish a ranked choice system here in Santa Cruz. For many years, I've studied the profoundly more democratic and representative outcomes of ranked choice voting 
that ranked choice voting can produce. Once people understand how it works, they tend to see its value. Among the recommendations of the Santa Clara Charter Committee, I noticed that ranked choice voting was mentioned. My understanding is that considering a change from at-large to district elections may in part be because of a concern regarding the California Fair Voting Rights Act. According to Fair Vote, however, this is not likely a concern for us. So the question really needs to be, what is the best system for free, fair representation here in Santa Cruz? We need a thorough evaluation to determine what, if any, changes should be made. The demographics and layout of Santa Cruz are unique, and so we need our own study. And I would very much like to contribute to that process. I've also always, 30 seconds, is that what that is? 27, okay. Um, I've al always also felt really proud about how Santa Cruz has a rotating mayoral seat, um, and that it's not elected at large. Um, my understanding is that over the years, it has, this method has ensured against a singular powerful individual and instead encourages a sharing amongst the council members and enhances a respect for, you can, I have so much more to say. You can, you can, you can finish up the sentence if you like. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really think that not only do we need to evaluate fair representation, but also what system will allow for a, a, um, an environment of respect and friendship. Thank you. Are there any questions? Councilmember Crown. You're talking about um, when you said Gail is gonna buy new machines, you mean Gail Pellerin in your application? Um, yeah, and that was like a year or two ago, so I think it's coming up a and year. When you say with RCV um, requirements, what are, what are those? Well, the, the, uh, the voting machines need to be ones that enable ranked choice voting. Thanks. So I think she was sounding very open to that when she came to one of our meetings. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to now invite up uh, Joe Gio. Former mayor. Yes. Two time mayor. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, good evening to you all. It's a different side of the podium here. Um, I, the application gives you a lot of my background, but very quickly, you, um, I was born in Hanley Hospital, which is now the uh, parking lot of the Dream Inn. Um, my family roots go to the wharf and to the agricultural um, industry up the North Coast. Um, I can't stand fish now but I, I do do something with plants, as I think many of you are aware of. Um, I have been, um, I went to San Jose State, got my degrees there, originally began teaching high school at Mountain High School in Hayward. And when um, Harbor High School was to open, which was 50 years ago, today, this year, <laughs> I was one of the original faculty. Um, I have also, um, <clears throat> as indicated, have been in the horticultural industry now for 65 years, and I'm still doing it. And I have also served on the city council for three terms and two terms as mayor. Um, as part of that, I've served on boards such as the uh, LAFCO and uh, Transit District, which gives you a lot of interplay of people, which is important in all of that. Uh, but also more particular to this particular assignment, I was very in involved and instrumental in getting the charter streamlined, I wouldn't call it revised. Uh, the original charter in 1948 had a lot of specifics in it. And so part of our, our goal was to make it more broad, more flexible. For example, it listed all of the boards and commissions that there were and their makeup and their duties. Um, it, that made it very impossible to make any changes without you know, putting it on the ballot. And so one of the outcomes of this, um, oh, I would say streamlining uh, of the charter was to make more generic so that the commissions were removed specifically and just gave the power to the council to establish them and to or do away with them as, as was needed. Um, there were other things such as, um, the charter said uh, $50 a month for each council member, $100 for the mayor. 
uh, made that more generic by tying it to the general law requirements or uh, restrictions on what uh, you should be paid. Uh, there were a lot of other things. We desexed the language and it became a problem. What are we gonna be called? Are you gonna be called council members or council people or whatever it is? And council members became the term that is included in the charter. Out of that uh, process came about eight amendments, as I recall, oh my God, uh, that were put before the people. And we did later ones as well. So what I will bring to this, to this just, process. Yeah, left, if you could wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, I would bring the experience, the knowledge, the background, and most importantly, the uh, institutional memory of what has gone on in the past. Thank you. Are there any council member questions? Councilmember Crone. Thank you for uh, applying and thank you for being here. Um, I just had that conversation with the Sentinel reporter. They still don't call us council members. Um, they still haven't gotten that in their booklet. Um, do you see anything on this um, charge that we put together that's not here that you think might Absolutely, uh, be and I wish I was gonna speak to that, but yeah. time doesn't go by rapidly. And it has to do that people don't realize that the school district is part of the charter. And uh, the makeup of the school board and uh, the, is part of the charter's establishment. And the question that we were discussing in one of the processes we went through with you know, the different times it was done was, is it fair the way the board is now established? Uh, three members, it's been changed over the years, but three members come from outside the city, three within the city, and one at large. And, but they're two separate districts, and it is possible, and it has happened that a majority of the board, elementary, dealing with the elementary issue, does not live in the city. And the council at the time we were beginning to do this, one questioned the fairness of that. And the school board was, we had met with the subcommittee of the school board, and they were receptive to it, but then we were deadlines and you know the earthquake came along and stuff like that. That's fascinating. And it sort of got lost Thank because you. there was no institutional memory that this was an issue that should be discussed and should be charge, a charge of this committee. Thank you, that's really fascinating history. Any, I have a quick question. When you met last time to streamline the, the charter, how, how long did you meet and uh, what would you say was, uh, it was a, the duration? It, it wasn't long because we dealt with the, um, with the city attorney and just a group of three of us, and which made recommendations to the council. Okay. And uh, then they were put on the ballot, and as I indicated, all the times that we did that, they were passed unanimously. Not unanimously, but by majority of the yeah. electorate. Yeah. Thank you, are there any other questions? Thank you, thank you for applying. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to now invite up Timory Gordon. Mayor, Council, thanks for having me. My name is Timory Gordon. I'm a Santa Cruz native, a uh, local business owner with nine employees, and I'm raising a family here. Um, after high school, I attended Cabrillo and then eventually transferred to Rhode Island School of Design, receiving a degree in industrial design. This is important for two reasons. The foundation of my education is in creative problem solving. And the second is after living many other places from east to west, I chose to come back to Santa Cruz, start a business, and raise a family here. My creative problem solving in this community goes beyond the built environment projects of Nielsen Studios that you may know of most recently, Abbott Square, which is a great community contribution. Um, it's a way of thinking. It's uh, creative problem solving is a way of thinking, of approaching challenges, and of thinking outside the box. I've used these skills as an arts commissioner for years on several small study groups in the city regarding the river development, wayfinding, and many other topics to help make the city a better place. My most recent contribution was as part of the short-term rental subcommittee. I believe my reputation is one of fairness, being a good listener, and rational decision maker. In our business, the ultimate goal with our clients is to help them make calculated decisions to reach their goals. I bring that same commitment here to you today, asking for position on this committee so I can help explore these topics thoroughly and honestly ensure our city's best future. Hey, thank you. And I'm also super concise. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Timory. Um, are there questions? any council member questions? 
Um, just the, uh, when you say principal and then slash designer, what does principal mean? Is that you um, own your business? Yeah, or? my husband is Christian Nielsen of Nielsen Studios and I'm, I'm the other half behind. Yeah. <laughs> so we're 50-50 owners okay. and yeah, so. Council Member Brown. Uh, Brown. I'm not Council Member Crown. Did you say Brown? I said Brown. I thought you said Crown. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I, okay. No, I did. I did Sorry. say Brown. I, I said sort of Council Member <laughs> Brown. Let me do that again. Council uh, Member Brown. <laughs> so I, you know, I appreciate your uh, your uh, ideas about how to work collabor collaboratively and, and engage in, in your problem solving. Um, I'm wondering if you if there are any particular aspects of the committee's charge that you're interested in. District elections at we, large. We have some other issues that we discussed during our uh, decision when we were making the decision to establish this uh, committee. Right. Um, I I don't want to say I come with an agenda on any one of those particular topics, other than I'm really interested in exploring them all thoroughly, <laughs> with the idea that. I may have a certain opinions I, I fully recognize, but I don't necessarily feel like they are 100% um, the only way. And what's interesting to me about being part of this subcommittee is that just in listening here and knowing who you all chose, that everybody brings a really interesting um, perspective and background. And so I feel like I'm gonna learn a lot and be a really great contributor to some really important decisions to help Santa Cruz be its best self. <laughs> so. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Timory. Thank you. Okay, now I'd like to invite up Denise Holbert. <laughs> Mayor Terrazas and members of the uh, council. Um, I find myself here tonight um, applying to serve on the Charter Amendment Committee because all of my adult life, I've, I've been an activist and an observer of the po political process in Santa Cruz. I've had the privilege of working in county government as an analyst for two county supervisors, and I've served on the County Planning Commission for 23 years as a third district commissioner. And I'm still on the, on the County Planning Commissioner as a, uh, alternate, I just can't seem to get off it. Um, and as you know, many of those years were, f were filled with very contentious issues. So I think my problem sol solving abilities are um, really put to the test there. Uh, I also have extensive experience in the political area, playing a leadership role in countless local political campaigns for candidates as well as ballot measures. At the present time, I am working on a um, ballot measure, Measure G, for the sales tax. Um, I won't list uh, all my other experiences. You do, you do have a list that I've submitted on my application. I believe I have a, a good understanding of how our local government operates. I understand how difficult it is to carry out the duties of an elected representative the time required to attend meetings, read massive reports in short periods of time, respond to constituent problems, and then there's the financial burden. I also believe it is critical if we are to have a truly representative council that we must make sure the opportunity is not just for, for an exclusive few, but is available to all members of the city. Having worked in a staff position in local government for many years, I'm also aware of the wear and tear on the support staff that runs the city day, day to day. The decisions made by this committee, and finally the council, and finally the electorate will have a major effect on staff as well. As an activist, I know the transparency in government is necessary to engender trust. It is, it is important that citizens is that good citizen outreach is inclusive. The task before the committee requires the members to work with each other, the staff and the community. It requires committee members to keep an open mind on all the issues. 
If I am chosen to be on the committee, I will do my homework. I will keep an open mind on all the issues, remembering that the goal is always to devise the best way to deliver good government. Any questions? Thank you, Denise. Council Member Crone. Thank you, Mayor. Um, loving history, I didn't know you grew up here. Um, and you, yes, I did. Ah, <laughs> you, you, you met, uh, yeah, I've known you for a while and I didn't know that. Um, you mentioned that the population grew from 25 to 64,000 since you were younger and now. Uh, put that into context, could you, of this charter committee and what, what, what might that mean as far as I'm not sure what it means. Well, 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 well uh, you mentioned in your application, but I, I mean, it's what you're nothing getting stays at. the same, you know, it's uh, that things do change and we have to possibly make um, uh, accommodation for that. No, yeah, I'm just thinking about population and growth and uh, if, if this charter well, if committee. If you had more time, I, you know, I, you know, so, you know, I'll talk to you about it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Denise. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, I'd, I'd now like to invite up Christina Horn. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Christina Horn, and although I will confess to having a somewhat embarrassing level of wonkish interest in each and every one of the issues that will be discussed by the committee, I will direct my comments to the topic of at-large versus district elections. Um, I come to you without a strong opinion on the issue and with my eyes and ears wide open. I have read and agreed with opinions put forth by the League of Women Voters, the National League of Cities, as well as proponents of each electoral system. Both sides have strong and cogent arguments. The cities of Sunnyvale, Morgan Hill, Santa Clara, Fremont, and Menlo Park have either changed to district elections or are considering doing so in the next election cycle. The city of Santa Barbara switched from district elections to at-large elections back in 1968 and then switched back to district elections in, in 2014. Santa Monica is presently defending itself against a legal challenge brought forth by plaintiffs citing violation of the California Voting Rights Act that would have the city transition to district elections immediately. No matter how one may feel about the issue, what seems apparent to me is that ideally we should arrive at a community consensus opinion on this before the question is forced by a lawsuit when we can have a clear vision on what is best for Santa Cruz without the fear of threatening an overwhelming legal cost clouding our judgment. When the city of Palmdale tackled this question back in 2015, they ended up settling a CVRA legal case that forced district elections and led to the obligation to pay $4.5 million in plaintiff legal fees plus interest in addition to paying their own lawyers. I think for Santa Cruz's part, this needs to be avoided at all costs. It is also important to note that while the experiences of other cities are illustrative and it is a great foundational exercise to examine the actions of other municipalities that may have gone before us on this topic, it is imperative to arrive at a solution that is Santa Cruzian in nature. What works for Santa Barbara or Sunnyvale may not make sense for our city. As a member of the Charter Committee, I would strive to work with other members to achieve consensus around a homegrown solution that reflects the unique demographics of our city, as well as the collective consciousness of our electorate. Um, I'd like to end by emphasizing that I meant what I said in my application, and that's namely that the strongest outcomes are those that are derived from the collaborative work of a diverse group of stakeholders. Honoring and respecting the opinions of others and working to achieve consensus would be central to a successful committee. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Are there any council member questions? Council member Crone. Um, I'm just, if, if Santa Cruz was ever forced to create districts, what, what would be the reasoning for that? From what um, you've looked I, at? I think that there have been several lawsuits. I think there's been uh, 20, a total of 22 that have been put forth since the um, California Voting Rights Act was put into place. Um, so you're saying it's a fairness issue that there's certain groups being left out? Yeah, well, you know, absolutely. And one of the issues that I've sort of uh, come to understand a little bit better since I've just been doing very preliminary research 
is that um, you know the, these uh, lawsuits that are brought forth by uh, usually different groups of either voters or constituents that are representing either a minority group or, and it can be minority in, in, in a different sense. It could be sort of socioeconomic, ethnic, what have you, um, can get quite costly and can spin out of control uh, quite rapidly. So, um, you know, I, what I found so interesting about the case of Santa Barbara in particular is, I'm sorry, Santa Monica, is that voters had resisted this transition from uh, at-large district elections twice since the city implemented this in 1946. They had uh, voter referendums in uh, 1975 and 2002. And so Santa Monica is really fighting quite aggressively to um, basically say, okay, state of California, if you think that this is so important, then mandate it at a statewide level. And in the meantime, we're gonna fight for our unique municipality's interest in, in preserving the uh, at large. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Brown. So just a follow-up question. Uh, so I, I think it's try, getting at uh, Councilmember Crone's question. If, um, <coughs> Just based on, and I'm, I'm not trying to push and, and suggest that you are advocating for districts in any way or that um, you're, you're so, so I just want to be clear about that. But I'm just trying, it's, it's a question that I genuinely want to try to get answered and so I'm looking for all kinds of perspectives and knowledge about this. Um, if it, it were, it, I mean, clearly there are underrepresented populations underrepresented on this city council. Um, and so I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how, um, if at all, that might be addressed through kind of a spatial uh, solution, right? So, so organi that's organized geographically because um, like, uh, you know, Council Member Cron, I've looked at the map and so I, I'm just, it's, a, it's an open question and I'm wondering if you've thought about that, if you have anything. You I agree it's an open question and I have thought uh, at length about sort of the dynamics behind depending on your preferred pronunciation, gerrymandering or gerrymandering. And I think that to have, you know, some educated uh, eyes on the, the topic that is, you know, not afraid of sort of data-driven research and empirical um, research, that that would only sort of enhance the outcome. Thank you. Uh-huh. So I'd, I'd next like to invite up Keshav Kumar. Good evening, City Council members. Uh, my name is Kesav Kumar, and I'm here tonight because I'm applying to be on the Charter Amendment Committee. A little bit about myself. I am a third year senior at UC Santa Cruz, and I'm hoping to make Santa Cruz my long-term home. Um, I come from Mount Shasta, California, so I'm coming from the much smaller side from a town that has a population of about 5,000. And so it, the politics here are very different, and each opportunity I've had to get involved in our local governance has been an opportunity for me to learn, which is what I hope to do by serving on this committee. I understand the weight of this committee as it will be taking into considerations issues that have long-term effects on our cities is very, very, very serious. Topics including directly electing our mayor, holding district elections, and compensating city council members will require sensitivity and special attention. I believe my role in the community as a student, as well as an aspiring policy analyst with previous work experience in local governance will be an asset to this committee. Recently, across the state of California, several small and medium-sized cities have shifted to district elections. In general, according to the League of California Cities, lawsuits alleging the California Voting Rights Act is not being followed have caused over 80 cities in our, in our state to move away from at-large city council elections and towards district elections. The city of Santa Cruz is in a fortunate situation of having time on our side. By considering every aspect of a transition to district elections, we can better understand the effects they would have on our community. Rather than for a 45-day deadline that generally accompanies the demand letter, we have an opportunity to consult with other cities on their experiences and use them as case studies to understand if district elections are 
right for us. If they are right or if they are wrong, that gives us as an, opportuni an opportunity as a committee and with the city council support to advocate to the city for what we believe is the best solution for our city. If we're considering a shift towards district elections, I also believe consideration of changing the method of selecting a mayor is crucial. Um, my experience working under Mayor Chase last year allowed me to see firsthand the scope of the mayor's office, as well as the experience of working around council members allowed me to see you know, the workload, you know, the amount that's expected of just a council member. And so I think with that in mind, uh, there is you know, a lot of serious topics to be considered apart from the highlighted ones, including council, co council compensation. Um, finally, I believe my experience as a policy analyst, again, will be a huge asset to the committee. Um, I'm really hoping to turn this into, um, someone previously said, doing my homework. Um, I want to make sure that we can look to other cities, what's been done, what the process has been for them, and use those as our case studies to make sure that we're doing everything that we are on solid footing. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Are there any council member questions? Council member Brown. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, given your interest in further exploration of district elections and your um, very accurate uh, acknowledgement of the potential for lawsuit, I'm wondering if you, in the initial uh, look that you've taken at um, these issues, if you have um, been able to identify any particular vulnerabilities within the city of Santa Cruz, for such a lawsuit, just you know, what are what some of those might be? I mean, I think we all could identify some, but just wondering what you're you're thinking about. Yeah, um, if I can, I'd like to add, answer in a more open way. Um, I can't, you know, we I, we went over it with um, Christina Horn's um, sort of testimony to the city council, but. One thing that I did want to add to what we've already heard is that I don't think we can name a city that's actually um, fully survived the lawsuit. I think that it puts the city in a pretty difficult financial situation um, if the lawsuit is actually raised. And so what I'd spoken about previously, which is you know using this committee as a first step rather than an end-all be-all to then advocate to the larger community to ensure that you know we're all on the same page, you know, both insiders with city government as well as folks who may not know as much about this issue. Any other questions? Council Member Crone? No, but I appreciate his academic approach to the, uh, the committee, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, next I'd like to invite up David Schumann. How you guys doing? Great. I apologize for the voice. Um, I was joking with one of my young UCSC employees. I said I sound like Bobby Brady and they looked at me, had no idea what I was talking about. So, um, Mayor Terrazas and city council members, uh, thank you very much for the services you provide on behalf of our city. Yours is often a very thankless job, but uh, I can definitely testify that it is essential to how the city functions. As a brief bio, uh, my name is David Schumann. I'm a veterinarian and I've owned a small animal hospital in downtown Santa Cruz for over 19 years. Again, I apologize for the voice. Can I put it on pause for a second? Do you want some water? No, it's been like this for... Okay. It's a souvenir. Got it. So. Okay. <laughs> um, my wife and I have two children. One is currently a freshman at Santa Cruz High and the other is a seventh grader at PCS. Um, I've resided in Santa Cruz for 24 years, and over the years that I've lived here, I have participated in various civic engagements. Um, the latest uh, civic engagement that was as a co-chair during the campaign for bond measures A and B, where we asked voters to approve spending over $200 million to rebuild the infrastructure of the Santa Cruz City Schools. I am very interested in joining uh, the Charter Amendment Committee I do not believe that our current mode of governance is broken or outdated, not at all. In fact, I believe it has served us very, very well for decades and many great things have been accomplished because of it. I also believe that our city has changed. Uh, we are no longer a large town and we no longer have large town problems. I think instead if we need to see ourselves as a small city 
and we have small city problems. And so it's with this in mind that it seems very reasonable and prudent to explore possible ways to adjust how our city is actually governed. Although I've mulled over this committee subject for many years, I actually do not have very dogmatic views on the best ways to accomplish improvements or changes if they're even needed. It is very possible that our current way is absolutely the best way for our city and that there's no tweaking, there's nothing that's really needed, but I do believe the conversation is essential if only for our own long-term prosperity. And I'm very eager to join as both a participant, a researcher, and a listener as any changes to the charter would hopefully include the input from all participating parties. I'd like to say lastly that we live in an amazing place and our popularity is creating a very dramatic and fast change within our city. I commend Mayor Terrazas for creating this opportunity where our community can examine itself with the goal of improving the lives of all of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, David. Are there any questions from council? Right. First time, first time, thank you. Okay, I'd like to now invite up uh, Noah Thorne. And Noah will be the final applicant that we'll hear from this evening. Since I'm last, I'll try and make this quick. Uh, so, hi, I'm Noah Toron. I'm originally from San Diego. I'm a recent graduate of UCSC. I graduated uh, just this June with a uh, major in studying uh, economics and I minored in stats. Basically, what I'm coming here before you today is <laughs> as, a, as a wonk and an advocate for students. Um, my, a lot of my time spent at UCSC was spent trying to advocate for students to get more involved in camp, uh, city politics. I helped get uh, a student appointed to the UCSC ex officio position on the Metro Board. Uh, and I want to you know, keep bringing student voices to committees like this. This is why I'm applying here. Um, I've also got experience in student government, rewriting government documents and analyzing and picking over every little detail. And that's something I really want to bring to city politics. Um, I also uh, really want to make this place my home, uh, if and if it's just for the next couple of years, and I want to give back to the city that's given me so much in this last four years. Uh, specifically, the, the issues that have me interested are the uh, making what is essentially a district with UCSC in it and a lot of other things. Well, not a lot of it, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, the district containing UCSC, concentrating students like that has dramatic effects and I'd be interested to see what other cities have experienced when they've concentrated groups like that into one uh, district. Um, I'd also really like to get the council to be more accessible to students and recent graduates to get ideally a student on the committee uh, or a recent grad or you know, on the council. Uh, not myself personally, uh, but raising the uh, compensation would definitely help people, you know, both support themselves financially and participate in city uh, council while being a full-time student. And I think that's something that would be really valuable. Uh, but that's all I have to say. I'll, any questions? Thank you, No. Are there any council member questions? How did you hear about this position? And also, how do you think the city could outreach more or, or in a better way to bring students into local government? Uh, I heard about the position through my roommate, and I think that there's a lot of outreach that could be done. Uh, I, when I was chair of my branch of the student government, brought uh, some city council uh, members, including Mike Rockin and Cynthia Chase, uh, to speak to uh, the, a group of you know, student government students to you know, talk about the issues of the day and how students can get more involved. And I think you know, coming to campus it would be great. Um, students, I understand, do really have to reach out, and that's something that I'm trying to do with this. I'm trying to come as a recent student and an advocate for students to the council to say, here's what I say, here's what my student, my friends say, here's what my colleagues say, so on. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Noah. Thank you thank for you. being here this evening. No worries. Have a great night, y'all. Hey, thank you. 
And I'd just like to say, I wanna thank each of the 13 applicants who came here this evening for the interviews. I know coming on a Tuesday evening to do this is time out of your day, time away from family. I wanna personally thank each of you for being here this evening. And just as background, the, um, the council will be continuing to review the applications as well as kind of mull over what we've heard this evening at the October 9th meeting, that's uh, one week from today, we'll be making decisions on who those appointments will be for these six seats. So there'll be a vote in the afternoon, and then you'll receive notification directly from the city in regards to those appointments. Um, I can tell you now, if it hasn't been made public already, it may be in the packet, but in alphabetical order, the direct appointments to the committee were David Baskin, Kathy Calfo, Rachel Dan, Leslie Lopez, William Au, Chris Reyes and Glenn Schaller. So those are the direct appointments and then there'll be six appointments that will come through this process here this evening. And you're welcome to reach out to council members. Council members may be contacting you to, for any of the discussions, but I am just very much impressed with everyone's not only interest, but knowledge, but um, your, your sense of like your, uh, your sense of contributing to Santa Cruz and your service. So again, thank you. Um, my deepest thanks for you being here and applying for these positions. Thank you. Yeah, are there any other council member uh, questions or comments before we conclude this evening? Uh, council member Noroyan? So at the actual meeting where we choose six folks, how will that work? I think that it'll, it'll go a lot along the lines of how we handle our advisory appointments in terms of they'll be open for nominations. Maybe I'll even ask the clerk if she, she could uh, kind of explain the process like we've done for the advisory appointments. We had planned on doing it exactly like that where you, I think you started at one end and went, worked your way down for nominations and then you did the votes. And so are you envisioning we'll have probably have, each person will have six nominations we'll go through um, and you know, we'll, then we would uh, tabulate the number of votes for each, um, for each uh, nomination and once someone reaches a majority, they'd be appointed. Like if we go from Sandy to Chris, then it would be if all of us mention the same person you don't have to repeat it if someone's nominated and okay. it's one of your, it's, you'd be nominating someone who has not been already okay. nominated and All then right. you'd go through so the process. So we take the nominations first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And can we give folks a time, what day exactly? That's Tuesday, be? October 9th. It'll be in the afternoon session. Um, we're still working on our Tuesday agenda. I'll maybe ask again the clerk. I mean, I think it'd be sometime after two o'clock that we would do this, to, and it might be later in the afternoon because it'd be part of our general business. Probably before four o'clock, I imagine. It'll be it'll be after, I imagine, two o'clock and before four o'clock, if I could pinpoint it down to a particular time. Council Member Matthews. Um, two things, thank you all. This is a really incredible, impressive. Uh, yeah. people who care a lot and have a lot to offer. So thank you. Um, I just have a question on the process because there, there will be so many appointments compared to our normal commission appointments. Um, all the nominations will be put on the floor and then we go along and, for example, starting with Sandy, six choices and then, do that. And then there may very well be opportunities where so many good applicants that we I, 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 I see multiple rounds probably yeah. going through so, because I think. I'm just trying to do the math. <laughs> well, I'm thinking what we would have is we would, like I would envision that um, each person would go through and make a nomination. You, are, you don't have to make a nomination for all six, but you could make nominations for two. And if, and if something's on the floor, then, then we would go through and have a vote. And we don't always have to start with me. That's okay. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I, it's fine, but. Oh, no, we're just, it was just, I think, pointed out this side, but it could be either side. Go start somewhere. Start, start maybe with, uh, here, we'll flip a coin. <laughs> okay. I want to thank everyone for being here this evening. This meeting is now adjourned, and uh, I appreciate um, your presence, and have a good evening. Okay. Really 15 minutes That's great. Huh? Here. Okay. Good, good group. <laughs> yeah.